15 Most Outrageous Drug Lords Part 1 If you are brand new to our channel, we invite you to take a moment to subscribe. Just click on the lit red button as well as the gray bell. Why the bell? Well, it will let you know every time we post a new video. 1. Merlin Alston, NYPD Cop Merlin Alston was an NYPD officer in the 46th precinct of the Bronx, something of an anomaly on our list. Although he wasn't technically what you'd call a drug lord himself, he has faced charges for being the departmental friend, bodyguard and protection to many who do qualify for the title. A Bronx drug kingpin told the court and federal prosecutors that the New York cop drove him to his appointments and provided protection for his coke runs using his service revolver. Merlin, on trial in the fall of 2016 for conspiracy to distribute narcotics and firearms possession, is said to have tipped off several drug dealers about the NYPD's investigations. Several dealers testified at the trial in the fall of 2016, including one who said Merlin gave him a card for the Patrolman's Benevolent Association, which the dealer says he used more than 30 times to avoid charges after being stopped on anything from traffic charges to weapons and drug possession. The New York cop and Bronx cocaine lord were high school buddies who never lost touch, even when their lives took them on ostensibly different paths. Alston's bail was revoked, and he went back to jail for the duration of his trial after a key witness was found strangled with his body crammed into the back of his BMW just before he was set to testify. 2. Brian Sherrington, British Drug Smuggling Kingpin British drug lord, Brian Sherrington, became well known for his bold and brazen business style. Always a colorful figure, Sherrington was a used car dealer at one time. During the 1990s, he was simultaneously working as police informant as he ran an extensive drug importation business with the help of corrupt officers. Dubbed one of Europe's 10 most wanted by the press, he managed to weasel out of convictions in four high-profile trials. He did serve time in Germany for cocaine smuggling in 2003, but was back in Spain in 2006. In 2007, a Spanish court found him not guilty of a plot to import marijuana. Sherrington's lifestyle was the stuff that legends are made of, including reputedly keeping crocodiles in the pool of his Spanish villa. He was nabbed by authorities in Spain in August 2016 on the suspicion of drug trafficking as well as murdering a rival in the biz. Brian was arrested along with Sun Ray at the upscale yacht club where they were members. Spanish police found more than 200 kilos of coke at his properties, and authorities seized a fleet of luxury cars along with more than $500,000 in cash. 3. Griselda Blanco, the Cocaine Godmother Griselda Blanco, a rare woman drug lord known as the Cocaine Godmother, became infamous during the 1970s and 1980s, a period known as the Cocaine Cowboy Days of Miami. Griselda grew up poor in the slums of Medellin, Colombia, and began her criminal career as a pickpocket. She soon graduated to the drug trade, however, and was considered a pioneer of the Colombian drug smuggling biz. Three of her four sons, one of them named Michael Corleone after the Godfather character, ran the business with her. She also went through several husbands, two of whom she killed herself. She was renowned for her excessive lifestyle and sharp temper, and found her way to Miami, where authorities believe she was responsible for more than 40 deaths. It was the death of a two-year-old, however, who was gunned down instead of his father during a hit that ignited the public and law enforcement. She was eventually convicted of three murders and sentenced to about 20 years in jail. She had been destined for the death penalty, but in a bizarre twist, the prosecution's lead witness was involved in a phone sex scandal with three secretaries from the Miami Dad State Attorney's Office, weakening their case. After her release from prison in 2004, she was deported to Colombia, where she was gunned down on the street in 2012.
4. John Heron Wahoo, politician, drug kingpin, or both, decried by his many enemies, yet beloved by the Kenyan public, it's difficult to say, whether he was a true drug lord, or just a misunderstood politician. Heron Wahoo of Kenya could be categorized as either or both. John Heron Wahoo is a leader of the Party of Independent Candidates of Kenya, was elected as the MP, Member of Parliament, for the Kilin region of the country. At one time, Heron actually served as chairman of the Kenya Anti-Corruption Commission KACC. A former policeman, he was also known to be an excellent sharpshooter. Heron is said to have started up in the drug trade while traveling to international shooting competitions when he was still an active member of the police force. While he has insisted that he's not in the drug trade at all, Heron Wan has never provided an explanation for his obvious riches, including a $750 million United States dollars business empire. In 2011, he was put on U.S. President Obama's infamous lists of international drug kingpins, a move Mwahu says was motivated by a desire to seize his properties and other U.S.-based assets. Despite all of the investigations and public charges, including the public indictment by the Kenyan parliament, nothing has stuck. As of fall 2016, Heron has entered the race for governor of Nairobi in the upcoming 2017 elections. 5. Mihal Karner, Slovenian Steroid King Slovenian drug kingpin, Mihal Karner, doesn't deal in highs other than those that can be obtained from endorphins from working out. He's said to have made more than $50 million United States dollars since 2000, selling illegal steroids over the internet. Anabolic steroid sales are banned, unless prescribed by a physician in both the US and Slovenia. Mihal's reach extends over a web-based network through the UK and Italy, and involves multiple shell companies and intermediaries who arranged the shipments. Customers buy the steroids by Western Union or money wire transfer that goes directly to a bank in Austria. The elusive, Mihal, has been hunted by four different countries for the last decade. Karner and his wife were arrested at the Austrian ski chalet they owned in 2011, but vanished after being released on bail. Despite ongoing efforts, he is thought to still be running his business as usual out of Slovenia. He's been indicted in the US along with his wife and brother for money laundering and drug trafficking. Yet, with no extradition treaty between the United States and Slovenia, the chances of collecting him are minimal. 6. Semyon Majilovic, Russian Mob Boss of Bosses Semyon Majilovic is the boss of bosses in the Bratva, or Russian Mob, and is known for his trademark cigars and fedoras. Along with a big chunk of the international drug trade, Ukrainian-born crime boss, Semyon Majilovic, and his gang are pretty much up for anything. The Russian mobster is called the Brainy Don, because of his economics degree, something that may have played a part in one of his gang's more famous crimes. The gang used the ruse of the East European gas trade to defraud unsuspecting investors in Pennsylvania to losses of $150 million. He's also been known to delve into contract murders, international human trafficking, and even trading nuclear material. Semyon controls many natural gas pipelines through Russia and Eastern Europe, and is alleged to have meddled with the international gas markets. Semyon was indicted in 2003, and arrested for tax evasion in 2008. He is known to have over 100 sham companies, along with bank accounts in 27 countries. Yet, the charges were later dropped. Semyon currently lives in Moscow, and is rumored to be on friendly terms with Vladimir Putin. 7. Rocco Morabito, Mafia Kingpin Born in 1966, Rocco Morabito represents the old-school mafia, boss of the Ndrangheta, which is said to be the most powerful of all the mafia organizations in Italy. It is so all-encompassing that it accounts for about 3.5% of Italy's GDP, and is believed to involve more than 60,000 people internationally. Rocco is a native of the Calabria region in the south of Italy, and was literally born into the lifestyle as a member of the Morabito gang. 
It was the media who gave him the nickname King of Cocaine, and he wasn't shy to being in the public eye. Rocco was known for his lavish parties, expensive lifestyle, and his ubiquitous grey double-breasted suits. Drug Lord Link Rocco is alleged to have been a favored associate of infamous Mexican drug lord, El Chapo. Rocco is still on Italy's most wanted list, on the run from a 30-year sentence for drug and conspiracy convictions, that date back to 1994. With his strong connections to Latin America, some theories have him currently in Brazil, where he could continue to operate his business. 8. Haji Lal Janajaksa, King of the Poppy Trade in 2014, U.S. officials congratulated themselves on finally bringing Haji Lal Janajaksa, a key figure in Afghanistan's illegal drug trade, to justice. It's something they were able to do in cooperation with Afghani authorities. Any positive feelings on the conviction evaporated, however, when he was able to bribe his way out of prison later that same year. The price was said to have reached as high as 14 million dollars United States dollars, and was divided among several layers of the judicial system. It's a common happening in Afghanistan, although the price was still relatively high. Ishaksa began plying his trade with opium paste in the 1980s. By the 1990s, he was building his own labs to turn the paste into heroin. He set up shop in Kandahar after the Taliban was driven out in 2001, and found an ally in Ahmed Wali Karzai, half-brother to then Afghani President Ahmed Karzai. He lived under that protection until Ahmed Karzai was killed in 2011. President Obama added his name to a public list of international drug kingpins in 2012. Haji was arrested after a shootout with authorities the same year, and eventually sentenced to 20 years in prison. Since his prison buyout, his current whereabouts are not known.